Long before the NYPD started harassing practically everyone, they kept their bullying to smaller demographics like blacks and gays and immigrants. In 1957, it was just another day as usual in NYC. Two cops with billy clubs were beating a black man named Reese Poe on a Harlem sidewalk. Two passers-by, one of them named Johnson Hinton, saw the assault in progress and ran to try to stop it. But rather than stop the beating, the two cops just began wailing on Hinton and his friend instead. They even went so far as to kidnap Hinton after beating him and held him at NYPD's 28th precinct. Now, it just so happened that Hinton and his friend were members of a local church called Temple Seven. It was part of a larger religion called the Nation of Islam, whose most prominent member was, yes, Malcolm X. So being left behind, Hinton's friend called on his church network to inform them of their friend's kidnapping. Upon hearing the news, Malcolm X and 50 other brothers from Temple Seven began walking to the 28th precinct. But their number didn't remain 50 for long. Word spread about what had happened and others came out into the street to join them. Malcolm X wrote about the incident, Negroes who never had seen anything like this were coming out of stores and restaurants and bars, enlarging the crowd following us. Upon arrival, Malcolm and the following crowd demanded to check on the status of their friend. At first, the NYPD lied and claimed Hinton wasn't there, but Malcolm pressed, and finally the police let Malcolm see Hinton, who he saw was a bloody mess and badly in need of medical treatment. Malcolm insisted that Hinton be taken to a hospital, and at first the NYPD refused, but then more and more people gathered around the precinct, first hundreds and then thousands, and the public pressure finally became too much. The cops called an ambulance and Hinton was taken to a Harlem hospital. That night outside the 28th precinct, over 4,000 people from Harlem gathered to ensure the welfare of Johnson Hinton. And their actions ended up saving his life because it turns out that his injuries were so severe that he had to get multiple brain surgeries afterward. He was bailed out by the Temple Seven Brothers the next morning. Johnson Hinton then sued the NYPD, and a jury awarded him $70,000, which at that time was the highest settlement in NYPD history. Today, unlike in 1957, the NYPD aren't just unpopular with minorities. Police are probably more unpopular now than ever. Look no further than the epic fail of the My NYPD Twitter campaign of 2014. In case you missed it, the police's PR department was trying to look friendly and cool, so they asked people to post pictures of themselves smiling with police on Twitter and hashtag it with My NYPD. Tens of thousands of people per hour participated, but they posted more realistic pictures, like of themselves being choked, or tackled, or maced by the NYPD instead. So Malcolm X and his crew demonstrated that having a pre-existing network can literally make the difference between life and death for a person who's unfortunate enough to fall into the clutches of the police. And Malcolm X's crew did not even have cell phones or cameras. So imagine the difference that a cop blocking network can make today when the average smartphone lets you live stream an incident to thousands of people within a matter of seconds for free. Do you have a local network to watch your back? You want one? Visit copblock.org slash groups today to see if a chapter exists near you. And if you don't see one, consider starting one yourself. <laughs>